Hey y'all, I'm Fran with the developer relations team here at WP Engine focused on headless WordPress. I'm super stoked to be here because in today's walkthrough video, I'm going to go over authentication in headless WordPress with Faust.js and its two strategies for auth. So let's dive right in. Diving right in here, let's talk about the setup and getting started. And just a note, to benefit from this video, you should be familiar with the basics of WordPress development, WP GraphQL, Next.js, and the Apollo client. Now, just the steps that I took, and I'll link these in the YouTube uh, description when I post this video. But for the WordPress setup, I spun up a WordPress install on WP Engine. You can use any host of your choice. I installed and activated the WP GraphQL plugin, which is right here. And then I've installed the Faust.js plugin right over here. Then on the front end, when you spin up Faust, you want to pull down its NPM package and then run on your terminal this getting started um, command to get started here. And again, I'll link the walkthroughs on how to do this and connect everything in the YouTube description. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Faust authentication strategy that we're going to visit first, which is redirect-based authentication. Let me go over to a clear browser here. Okay, so redirect-based authentication is the first strategy that we're going to talk about, and it's the default method in Faust.js. Now, this strategy involves the user being redirected to the WP admin login page to authenticate. Now, once the user has logged into WordPress, they get directed back to the Faust.js app with an auth code that is used to request refresh and access tokens. Now, the user then sees the gated content and then there's a logout button to log out. So let's look at how this will look like on the browser with its flow. I have to go to my terminal and start the development server. Now, once this is started, let me go back to the browser here. Now, what you're seeing here is, for those of you that aren't familiar with Faust.js, the Faust.js WordPress template hierarchy in the JavaScript side, this re essentially resembles the WordPress template hierarchy, but with a JavaScript front end approach. So <clears throat> I created a path called gated. So let's go to that page and path. And what you see here, and excuse the CSS, is a login page. So when I hit login, it should direct, yes, it d redirects me back to the WP admin login. So if I log into that, log in, it should direct me back to the Faust app that pulls out my gated content. And in this case, it's the post titles. There's the logout button. When I hit logout, it should direct me back to the Faust front page. And that's the workflow for redirect based authentication. Now let's dive into the code and check how this all works. All right, we are in Visual Studio Code and I have a Faust JS project spun up here. And what we're going to do is go into where that gated file lives that we made that we showed you earlier. So Within the source directory here, we're going to go to the pages directory. And within that pages directory is the gated.js file. And this is where this lives. This is a lot of code. So let's start by uh, breaking this down and explaining this a little bit line by line. So at the very top of the file here, we import the necessary dependencies and custom hooks. Use auth, get Apollo auth client, and the use logout hook from the Faust core module and GraphQL and use query from the Apollo client module. Now, just a couple of things with the get Apollo auth client function, it returns an instance of the Apollo client with the proper access token attached to it. Now with this client, you can make authenticated requests either by calling client.query on a page or template component or passing the client into Apollo's use query hook. In this example, we're gonna use the use query hook. Now the use logout function, that's a React hook that facilitates logout from your Faust app. So in this section right here, we define a function called authenticated view. Now inside the component, we initialize a client variable by calling the get Apollo auth client here. And then we also destructure the logout function from the use logout hook 
right here. Next, we use the use query hook from Apollo client passing a GraphQL query as the first argument and an object with the client property as the second argument. The query fetches data related to the authenticated WordPress viewers, posts, nodes, and name. The use query hook returns data and loading variables that we destructure and use to store the result of the query and the loading state. Now, if the loading variable is true, indicating that the query is still loading, we return a JSX fragment displaying loading right here. Otherwise, if it's false, meaning our query has resolved with details about the authenticated user, it renders JSX elements, including a welcome message and a logout button that triggers the logout function, a heading for my post and a list of posts retrieved from the data, which is right here. Down in this section over here, we define a component named page. And inside the component, the use auth hook is used to obtain the is authenticated, is ready, and login variables right here. Now, if ready is false, indicating that the authentication status is not yet determined, it, ret it returns a JSX fragment displaying loading. If authenticated is true, meaning the user is auth is authenticated, it renders the authenticated view component with its data as you saw up there. Otherwise, this renders JSX elements including a welcome message and a login link that points to the login URL obtained from the use auth hook, which directs you to the WP admin login. Overall, this is the file and code block that made that flow that you saw earlier work toward this gated page where it displays different content based on the authentication state. So when authenticated, it fetches and displays the user specific data and provides a logout button. When you're not authenticated, it displays a welcome message and a login link. Quickly talk about the use auth hook in Faust. And this is a custom hook made for the Faust JS framework that makes authentication easier to handle in your headless WordPress site. Let me go over to the docs right here for Faust. Make sure, yep, the use auth hook here for its usage. And then let me go down to this object on line 47 right here and highlight that. So below here, what we see are the properties in the object returned by use auth. Now the strategy prop is set to the value redirect for that exact strategy, which we just went over. The should redirect prop is set to the Boolean value false here. And you can change that on your strategies accordingly within this object. Just to go over the values within the destructured context here, we have the is authenticated value, which is a Boolean indicating whether the user is authenticated or not. This determines whether the user has successfully logged in or has valid auth credentials. Now is ready is also a Boolean and this determines if the use auth exports are ready to be used. And then lastly, the login URL. It's a string that represents the URL, whether the user should be redirected for the login process. Based on the strategy we use, it's either a Next.js page or a WordPress backend. The next thing we want to do is now implement the local authentication strategy. Let's go back into code. And if you're following along, I've made two branches for this. And then let me just switch branches. Cut the dev server here. White label. Okay, and let me pull this up. All right. We are in the next dash white label feature branch which I have used for the local authentication piece for this video. The first thing I want to discuss, <clears throat> the first thing I want to discuss is creating a login page for this. Now, let's see how this looks in the browser first. So I'm going to start the browser. And if I just click on the login link here, it takes me to a login page. Let's look at the code. Jumping back into Visual Studio Code, 
This will live in the components directory for login form and login form.js. So let's break down what's going on here. So at the top of the file, we import the necessary dependencies and hooks, specifically the use login hook that comes from Faust right up here. And then this code initializes state variables, user name and this code initializes state variables, username, email, and password using the use state hook, which are right here. And then the initial values are empty strings. It also calls the use login hook from Faust core and assigns the return values to lo login, loading, data, and error. Next down here is the uh, JSX markup for the login form component. It renders a form element right here. And then the on submit event handler is defined to prevent the default form submission behavior and instead calls the login function right here from the use login hook passing in the username email password and the redirect path members the rest of the jsx markup represents the login form ui including labels and input fields for username email password and a link for forgotten passwords, an error message display, a submit button, and a link to the signup page, which you saw earlier. All right, now let's see this whole user flow in the browser that when I log in and I properly log in, it'll take me to a members only gated content page. Let me go to the browser's already running. Let me go back to localhost. Here we go. And now I'm just going to log in here. And now that I'm logged in, I have a members only page for the gated content. And that's the flow. It works great. Now the code for the members only page, I'm not going to go over because it's very similar to the previous gated page that we made with the redirect ba based strategy. But in this case, this is using the local based strategy where we have our white label Next.js page. All right, now that we have this portion of the user experience of authentication done, let's see how to manage user accounts and update data in the next section. So to accomplish this, let me go back to my WP admin and we're gonna leverage a couple of plugins. The first one is the WP GraphQL cores plugin, which I've already downloaded here. And this tells WordPress not to ex only accept cookies from the domain where WP is installed, but it also from the decoupled front end apps domain tells it. So that way the same cookies can be used to authenticate users on both domains. Now, just a note. So when you install this, you want to go to the sidebar, Go to GraphQL here, settings, and then we're going to check uh, on the course tab just to make sure that the send site credentials is checked, enable login mutation is checked, and then the enable logout mutation is checked. Now in the extend access control allow origin header, we want the front end application uh, path which is in this case, localhost 3000. So we're gonna save this here and we're all good to go there. The next thing we're gonna need is the headless WP email settings made by my cohort, Kellen Mace. And that is already downloaded here. And this will allow us to point our email reset links to be sent to the front end Faust application. Let's jump over back to Visual Studio Code to see how the profile form works where you, a user can update their profile. And that lives over in, let me close this out. The profile form lives in profile form and then profile form.js. In order to fetch and manage the viewer's data from the server, we have a custom use viewer hook right here. And this use viewer hook initializes the viewer state using the use state hook, setting it to null initially. And then the viewer state represents the data of the currently authenticated user, such as their ID, their email, their first name, and their last name. 
which is down right here. Now, after checking if the user is authenticated with the use auth hook, from we run an async function with the use effect hook if the user is authenticated. This performs a query using Apollo client with client.query right here as it's awaiting it, and it fetches the viewer's data from the server. The query is defining the GraphQL function and requests the ID, email, first name, and last name of the viewer. Now, once the query is successful, the setViewer function is called to update the viewer state with the received data from data.viewer. Now, if the query fails or the user is not authenticated, the, view, the, viewer, the viewer state remains null. The next thing I want to transition to in this file is mutations in GraphQL. Now, mutations in GraphQL are an operation that allow us to modify or change data on the server. So let's focus on the use mutation hook from the Apollo client and what it's doing. Let me scroll down to our mutation within uh, line 59 right here. And let's break this down. So the use mutation hook is used to define a mutation operation called update profile. Now it takes two arguments, the mutation query and an options object. The mutation query is defined using the GraphQL function, and we have that right here, and it specifies the update profile mutation and its input variables, which are ID, first name, last name, and email, all as a string. The mutation updates a user's profile by calling the update user mutation and passing the input variables. Now, the options object passed to use mutation contains a client property, and that client property specifies the Apollo client to be used for executing the mutation. It uses the auth client obtained from get Apollo client auth function. So we have that down here. Now, when the user submits the profile form, the update profile mutation is fired off, which updates their information in the WordPress database with these variables here destructured. And then a success message is then displayed at the top of the form, which is this success message here. If it doesn't uh, update successfully, it will say failed. Let's check this out and how this looks in the browser. Going over back to the browser, the first thing that we want to look at is the WordPress admin because that's what's going to be updated. So let's see if this works. So back here in my WordPress admin, I'm logged in already um, within this, with this user, me, Fran Agulto. Now let's just make a simple change and see how that reflects on the back end from the front end. So going back to the browser, I am logged in with this authenticated content that I'm supposed to see as an authenticated user. Up in the nav bar here, I'm gonna go over to profile. This will auto populate with what user I'm already logged in as, in this case, Fran Agulto. Now let's just change the, let's just make a quick, easy edit to the first name, say Franklin. We're gonna update that profile. It fires off that update function and then this profile updated successfully message occurs. Now let's see how it looks like in the WP admin backend. If I go here, there it is, Franklin Agulto. Stoked, the mutation works. All right, so the next feature I wanna go over is the fact that we're gonna add a surprise bonus of authorization in this video, not just authentication, which basically is what it means, it's the author, it's the authority essentially for a user when they're authenticated to create a post. So now let's see how this works. So we're gonna go back to the code here and um, this component is already opened up. I have it in the create post form folder within the components directory and the create post form.js file. Now, the thing with this one is that it's very similar syntax-wise to the profile form component we just went over. Uh, and it uses the use mutation function to create a post and title content uh, and updates that into the WordPress backend. What I wanna focus on is the authorization using uh, for the user capabilities to 
give them that authorization and check if they can update a post and create one. So let's go inside this async function within the use effect hook right here. And right here, we're grabbing the get Apollo cli auth client function and making a query using uh, client.query. And that requests the capabilities of the actual viewer or the user, let's say in WordPress. Now, the query result is then destructured to get the data object and the viewer data is extracted from it and assigned to the viewer state uh, using set viewer down here. And then the effect is then invoked when the component mounts and when the is authenticated value right here changes. Now, finally, the viewer variable is returned from the use viewer hook here. Next, we have a default uh, component called create post form. And what I want to focus on in this is this variable called can create posts. And this one is a Boolean right here. And what it does is it's a variable that's assigned a Boolean value based on whether the viewer object has the capability to publish post. It uses optional chaining to safely access nested properties and the includes method to check if the capabilities array includes the string publish post. Now, a few lines down, we have a handle submit function right here, okay? And uh, that's asynchronous being called when the form is submitted. Now, the default form submission behavior is prevented by using e.preventDefault. Inside a try catch block here, uh, I have the create post mutation being called, and uh, that has the appropriate variables based on the form inputs and the can create post form value. Now, if can create post is true, the post will have a status of publish. Otherwise, it will have a status of draft, meaning it's not true, it stays in draft, which is a user or a viewer that's non-authorized uh, as far as capability is concerned to publish a post. And then it fires off a success message if they are um, successfully able to add a post, and then one that's uh, a catch error if it doesn't. So um, let's go and see how this looks in the browser. Here in the browser now, let's go over to create post so we can see how this actually works. And if I am logged in as a user that has the authorization to create a post, it defaults to this page and renders this page here. So let's go ahead and make a title test thing for test test content. I add this post, it'll fire off that mutation and then it'll give me the success message down here. Let's go back to the WP admin backend and then look at the post here. There we go. It's got updated and it inputted into the WordPress backend. Stoked, it works. The next feature I want to talk about in this authorization cycle that a user would experience in Headless WordPress is a signup form. So this will allow new users who are not signed up yet to sign up and become authenticated uh, users with their own credentials. Now, let's look at the code first and then we can see how this works in the browser. Back over here in Visual Studio Code, uh, this file will li live in the components directory under sign up form and then the sign up form.js file. And this uses the GraphQL and WP GraphQL mutations as well very similar to the previous code. But one thing I do wanna focus on is the mutation query using the GraphQL template literal from Apollo would register user, which is right here. And this is the mutation that fires off a request and registers a user by accepting their email, first name, and last name as input variables, and then returns the database ID of the user. Following that, we have a signup form component as the default export here. And within this component, the use mutation hook is called with the register user mutation query. The hook returns the register function for executing the mutation along with the data, loading, and error variables for managing the mutation state. 
The was sign up successful variable is defined to check if the sign up was successful by checking if the necessary data is present. Now following that, there's my handle submit function. And we need to define that and it's called from the signup form when it's submitted. So it prevents the default form submission behavior. It extracts the form data using form data, conver converts it into an object using object.from entries, and then calls a register function from the use mutation hook, passing the form var values as variables. Uh, any errors during the mutation are caught and logged to the console. Uh, we also have a conditional that is run to see if the signup was successful, and if it is, the component returns a message notifies, um, and notifying the success. At the bottom is the necessary JSX for um, the user to see the form on the UI. And let's go ahead and see how this looks like in um, the browser. Going over back to my browser here on the front page of my Faust application, we can go to the auth menu selection of sign up and it's gonna prompt me to sign up. So let's put a test Fran test a goal toe. And then let's use my Gmail account and let's sign up. So a message says, hey, thanks, check your email, an account confirmation link has been sent to you. Let's go over to my Gmail account here. Now here's the sign up link, and it's pointing to the front end Faust application off localhost, and I click that, and it prompts me to set up a password. Add. And let's go ahead and Declare the password and then confirm it. Saved. All right, now my password has been set and now I can log in as a user. So let's log in with my email and then I forgot my password and my password. And we should see the members authenticated content. Awesome. Now this works too. Now just a couple of notes on that entire flow that we, you just saw in the browser. Uh, the first thing you may have noticed is the link in the email that I clicked on to set the password. And that's generated by the headless WordPress email settings plugin. And it follows the format where you have your front end URL and then your set password key. So when you click it, you send users to the set password page of your front end JS app, and it, you can set your password as you saw. Um, and then the second thing is, is the actual set password form that you're brought to when you're ready to set your password. And that lives here um, in the code uh, within the components directory, the set password form file, excuse me, the set password form folder and then the set password form.js file. Now when the form is submitted and the field pa values pass validation, the reset user password mutation is executed to perform the password reset. One thing I wanna focus on is uh, it contains a validate function that is called before the mutation gets fired off. So let's go down to that. Here it is, function validate. And what happens here is it ensures that the password and confirm password values match. And the password is at least five characters long. So just know that with the current implementation, a user would be able to set a very weak password such as one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you want, you can use something like the ZXCVBN to enforce strong passwords on the client side. And, or you could use a WordPress plugin that enforces strong passwords on the server side. Now the last feature I want to talk about is the forgot password page and the component that renders this, which is send password reset email. Now this lives in the components directory here within this folder and the file is send password reset form. And essentially what this does is when the user submits the form, the send password reset email mutation is fired off and uh, it's executed. So if it is successful, 
the form gets replaced with a confirmation message telling the user to check their email. They can click the link in the email to be sent to the forward slash set dash password page and path and perform the reset, which is similar to what you saw when you created a new user and set that password. So they're, they, they're you used components in the same uh, workflow and let's see how that lifecycle and workflow looks like in the browser. Going over to the browser here, um, I am on the forward slash login page. Let me click on this link to take us to the forgot password page. And here I'll just input my email that's associated with the password that I want to reset. And then it gives me that confirmation pop-up saying, check my email, that's okay. And then I got the email here and here is the email that links us to the set password page on our front end. And then we have the set password page and then this is where we can perform the password uh, reset to set it up. One thing to note before we conclude is the protecting your cookies with HTTP only. Let me go to this blog that I reference in my article here. And just to note that both the redirect and local strategies in Faust use cookies that have the HTTP only attribute. This means it's not accessible at all via client-side JavaScript, and therefore it's not vulnerable to those types of attacks where rogue client-side JS code would be able to reach into your browser and take the non-HTTP only cookie to get the auth token, then make authenticated requests on behalf of the user without their permission. Now this results in more robust security. All right, that concludes our video. I had a lot of fun making the article and this video. I hope it provided a better understanding for y'all in using Faust.js and its auth strategies with, with some authorization sprinkled in. And as always, I'm super stoked to hear your feedback and any questions you might have on Headless WordPress. Hit us up in our Discord channel and I'll leave the links all you need in the YouTube description here. Until then, happy coding.